My name is Art Limber. I'm a commercial fly tire and have been since 1968. I started off doing bucktail flies for the first 35 years. I got tired, went into saltwater flies for the beaches, and that's all I'm doing now. I specialize in saltwater beaches. I love inventing flies and trying new things. So the small world is only nine or ten that are doing saltwater stuff, that, that, are, that are doing it on a commercial scale. There's not many left because what's happening, India, Pakistan's taken all over this stuff. It's crap that's coming out of there. But when they get these flies for eight and nine cents a piece and sell them for three sixty nine in the store, what are you gonna yeah. do? You gotta let me go out of business, but I don't give a shit anyway. That's my own invention, and these are two. D just the uh, candy. This is what I call the wizard. Those are tied with the polar bear. Epoxy heads, and these are an epoxy shrimp that I designed. They're all epoxy. All, all my bucktaining blades are all abalone. Some are some are really dark, some aren't. That's the way they should look. The stores are full of crap. You haven't seen nothing like that, have you? Nope. <laughs> oh Christ, the pink candy here is the best. Is I have one fly to take. It catches every goddamn thing. I've taken every species of Pacific salmon on that fly. Yeah. The only thing I haven't taken is a steelhead on because I haven't gone in the rivers after. I've taken springs in the river. Every spring I've caught in the river has been on this. That's only some of my patterns. I have four, over 40 patterns. But I'm old school, you see, most of my friends are dead now. This is what all of them are dead. Shit, I know every river around here. You name it, I fished it. I'm not making a living at this shit. I just want to make people happy. Get them stuff they, they can't get anywhere else. I'm only charging 25 cents more from the house than I would wholesale. So they go on, I call a sir, a strike impulse response. I figured this out after many, many years of fishing this in 68, I've been doing the beach fishing here. And they're striking the stuff they ate when they were fry, fingerlings, especially the coal. So the coal, the older the coho gets, the smaller you go. Because the more he regresses back into his mind when he gets back to the salt water from fresh. He regresses like an old person goes right back to a child in his mind. These salmon are the same thing. That's why you go for the small stuff. Beginning of the year, I'll probably use the wizard because they're a bit bigger stuff. But as you get into the year, you go off that and you go into the small stuff. You gotta think thin. The only fly that I have that's not thin is the, is the wizard. I never knew if that would work when I first designed it. It should work like hell. I call that one Snow White. Now you know why, you know what I use that one for? When the strike impulse response is when they're feeding on cuttlefish or small, a small octopus. They are a white, the lightest gray. It triggers their mind back, oh Jesus, white. Because, because a cuttlefish is, is, is off creamy white with the little brown spots on it, a true cuttlefish. So you go to that one, the white one, and some days it'll work like you wouldn't believe. See this one here I bought just recently because I couldn't get any, uh, any silver doctor blue hackle that was small, so I bought this. Now I'm gonna dye this fluorescent blue. I've got a dye pot right there. I have all the dye. You gotta wash it before you dye it. You gotta get it wet. You gotta have the temperature about 100, about, well, 68 degrees Fahrenheit to 70 degrees centigrade, I mean. Otherwise, you put it to a boil, take the pot off the stove and put it on the cement here for five minutes. Add a quarter cup of vinegar. Then you put your fur, feathers, whatever, in wet. Don't ever dye it dry. Because wet, if it's already wet, it acts as a wick and it soaks it right through, right? And it won't burn it. Animal, vegetable, or mineral dye. The mineral could be crushed rock, which is a cheaper dye. But the fluorescent yellow, the rest fluorescent pink, the, the fluorescent chartreuse, the silver doctor blue dyes, they're all insect bodies. And it's dried out and powdered. Therefore, you're paying about $18, $20 for half ounce. You know, the best tool a guy's got on his tackle box is an exacting knife. Because you can take that down, instead of laying it there, put it in there, and get rid of it. Oh, too easy. So now you don't have to think about it anymore. I'm not gonna lay, out, lay it and say, well, maybe someday I'll work it not. Done. Don't be afraid to strip a fly down. It's about perfect. You see where that, that, that thread falls down? Yep. That's where you want it to be. If you don't, your tail, when you put your tail on, it's gonna go down on you. You want it right at the drop off, so halfway there. I know how you even the ends up. They're all different ends up. Pull it, put it together. You don't need a hair stacker for this. 
there. Now we're going to measure where we are. I know where we are right there. I'm going to take it and cut it off here. I never, I never cut off and, and, and have it trailing behind the hook ever. I cut it right where I want to put it. So that's what you end up with. You tie your body material in here, right on top. Then you put your silver tinsel over top and you wrap them both together. You do one step, it's a one step thing. You don't have to put the bottom material and come back down again. I, I, I experiment all the time. I, I'm, you know, I'm still learning. The day you think you know everything is the time you got out of the bloody business. <laughs> I'm learning all the time. I learn from other people. Tell me I, something. Why would a sportsman, a guy who calls me a sportsman, use 11 and a half, 12 foot rod for a three pound paint? I'm old school. I'll take the day with what it gives me. I enjoy the day. There's no such thing as a bad day fishing. I never come home. Oh, I could, I couldn't reach those fish. I'm, you know, I, I, I'm watching other stuff. I, I got a 10 foot rod here. You know, it's only a $200 rod. It's a cam loops rod. I don't have to have a sage or a Loomis or, a, or one of these other big rods. I'm not a, my, I got a $48 pair of waders from Canadian Tire. I got a vest sitting up there that's about 50 years old. <laughs> you know, I yeah. don't need this expensive shit. I don't need it. To me, it's, it's an ego trip with a lot of people. I got the cheapest crap I can get. I got a good rod, a good reel, and a good line, and a decent rod. But as far as waders concerned, I get one here, I'll throw them in the garbage. I go buy another pair next year, 48 bucks on sale at Canadian Tire. And the boot waders, I can get them off and on too, not these more neoprenes I can't hardly get into the thing. They're out of breath, have a heart attack, trying to get them on and off. I can get slipped into these things. I don't have yeah. to go and buy a pair of wading boots for 150 bucks to go with the waders. It's a boot. <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. I put more people onto these Canadian tire waders than you wouldn't believe. They said, oh, we didn't know. I said, yeah, these guys walking around with these $700 Wardells and they get a hole in them and they got to go and change them next year. And they think they want a warranty? Good luck. The terminal end of it, the, the tackle, yeah, you've got to have a decent tackle. Yeah. But as far as the vest concern and the waders and that, you know, I'm going to wait out there. The, the, the guy next to me is not getting any farther out than I am. Quality is, is the most important thing with me. Nothing else matters. I don't care how many. If, if 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 I only did three candies an hour, I do three. But I, but I but I'm happy with every one of them when I'm finished. That's how I feel about tying flies. It's it's all about quality. If you don't have quality, you're not a tire.